How are enormous tunnels made through rocks and underwater? What incredible machines are used, and how big are they? I'm going to tell you about extraordinary technology capable of destroying everything in its path, leaving smooth walls behind. And at the end, I'll show you secret American tunnels hidden all over Europe. Why? Better stick around to find out. Tunnel Boring Machines Tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, are high-tech equipment used for drilling underground tunnels in the construction of metro systems, railroads, and other underground infrastructure. These monsters can create tunnels through various types of soil and rock, ensuring fast and safe underground construction. How do they do it? TBMs work on the principle of a rotating cutting shield that breaks up the rock as it moves forward. Behind the shield is the main part of the machine which stabilizes the newly dug tunnel and installs support structures. The material extracted from the ground is transported to the surface using specialized conveyor systems. Tunnel boring machines significantly increase the safety of construction work since most of the process is automated and takes place deep underground, minimizing the risk to human life. Additionally, TBMs allow tunnel construction to proceed much faster thanks to their high productivity and precision in following a preset route, especially crucial in dense urban areas or challenging geological conditions. However, using such machines comes with high costs, not only for for the equipment itself, but also for its maintenance and repair. Furthermore, TBMs require substantial investment in research and development to adapt to the specific geological conditions of each project. Just one miscalculation and a multi-billion dollar machine along with its crew could be buried underground. Big Bertha. How huge are these machines? Let me tell you. Big Bertha is one of the most famous and largest tunnel boring machines in the world, specifically designed for the Alaskan Way Viaduct Replacement Project in Seattle, Washington, USA. This grand project aimed to improve the city's transportation infrastructure by constructing an underground tunnel to replace the outdated viaduct, which posed a danger during earthquakes. Big Bertha, named after Seattle's first female mayor, Bertha Knight Landis, was built by the Japanese company Hitachi Zosin and delivered to Seattle in 2013. This TBM is rightfully considered one of the largest and most powerful in the world. Its diameter was an impressive 52 feet, and the entire machine measured 321 feet in length. It weighed over 73,000 tons, making it one of the heaviest machines of its kind. And yes, no one has surpassed it yet. Big Bertha began work in July 2013, drilling a nearly two-mile-long tunnel beneath downtown Seattle. The process involved breaking through various types of ground, from hard rock to sand and clay, which required immense power and precision, Big Bertha was equipped with a rotating cutting head with numerous disc cutters that broke up the rock, while the machine's internal systems transported the debris to the surface. What happened to Bertha? But not everything went smoothly. Just a few months after starting work, in December 2013, Big Bertha encountered serious problems. The machine unexpectedly stopped after hitting an obstacle at a depth of about 98 feet. It was later discovered that the cause was a damaged sealing system, which led to overheating and bearing failure. To fix the issue, a complex operation was carried out to excavate and lift the damaged part of the machine to the surface. Repair work took almost two years, significantly delaying the project. Despite Despite these difficulties, Big Bertha resumed work in December 2015 and completed the tunnel in April 2017. In total, the machine bored through over 29,000 feet of challenging conditions, marking a significant engineering achievement. After completing the tunnel, Big Bertha was dismantled and removed from the construction site, the Ladybird. And now we have the Ladybird, another large tunnel boring machine used in the grand project of building the Crossrail Metro Line in London. This project, also known as the Elizabeth Line, is one of the most extensive and ambitious infrastructure initiatives in Europe, aimed at creating a new railway line connecting the western and eastern parts of London and its suburbs. The Ladybird was one of several TBMs specially designed to dig tunnels under London. Its diameter was 23 feet, allowing it to effectively handle the task of creating double-track tunnels beneath the bustling city. The total length length of the machine was about 394 feet, and it weighed over 1,000 tons. Impressive, right? Like other TBMs, the Ladybird was equipped with a powerful rotating head with numerous cutters to break up the rock, along with a conveyor system to remove the excavated material. One of the key challenges for the Ladybird was drilling tunnels under historic buildings and architectural landmarks in central London. This required extreme precision and care to avoid damaging surface structures. London is a city with a centuries-old history and dense development, making the project
project exceptionally complex from an engineering perspective. The calculations alone took several years, but the machine successfully cut through various types of soil, including hard clay, sand, and gravel, while maintaining tunnel stability and protecting surrounding buildings from settlement or damage. During the Crossrail project, over 26 miles of tunnels were dug beneath London, and the Lady Bird played a crucial role in this monumental construction. It completed its mission in 2015 and was then dismantled journey through the Alps. What do you think about a tunnel straight through the mountains? Recently, Switzerland celebrated the opening of the Gotthard Tunnel, the longest railway tunnel in the world, stretching 35 miles. This engineering marvel, drilled through the Alps between the villages of Erstfeld and Bodio, has significantly improved Europe's transportation infrastructure, drastically cutting travel time between Zurich and Milan. The Gotthard Tunnel is part of the new rail link through the Alps project, which also includes the nine-mile-long Scenari Tunnel. The construction of the Gotthard Tunnel faced numerous technical challenges. Engineers had to overcome high temperatures and rock pressure at record-breaking depths, reaching up to 6,560 feet. To ensure the operability of the tunnel boring machines, special ventilation systems were developed to cool the air from 113 degrees off to about 82 to. Equipment and personnel were transported down a 2,625-foot vertical shaft. Can you imagine? During construction, over 31 million tons of rock were excavated, most of which was used to create concrete mixtures. The tunnel also had houses a unique 20-mile-long ventilation system, the largest ever built in the world. The company ABB, in collaboration with Germany's TLT Turbo GmbH, was responsible for the tunnel's power supply and ventilation systems, equipping it with the latest technology. In the event of any malfunctions, Gotthard's control system responds immediately, which is crucial for passenger safety and the tunnel's efficiency. An incredible project. But let's move on. Brenner Base Tunnel TBMs. What about an entire fleet of tunnel boring machines? Meet the Brenner Base Tunnel TBMs, playing a key role in creating one of Europe's most ambitious infrastructure projects. The Brenner Base Tunnel is a railway tunnel being drilled through the Alps, connecting Innsbruck in Austria to Fortezza in Italy. The total length of the tunnel will be about 40 miles, making it the longest underground railway tunnel in the world. This project is part of a larger transportation corridor known as Railway Freight Corridor No. 5, designed to improve rail connectivity between northern and southern Europe. The tunnel runs under the main ridge of the Alps, allowing for the avoidance of steep climbs and winding routes of the existing railway line over the Brenner Pass. This will not only speed up freight and passenger travel, but also significantly reduce carbon emissions, as the tunnel will encourage a shift from road to rail transport. To build such a massive tunnel, special TBMs were designed, each with a diameter of 35 feet. These machines are highly complex, equipped with powerful rotating cutting heads capable of slicing through the hardest rock. All the equipment used in the Brenner Base Tunnel project was created with the unique geological and engineering challenges of tunneling through the Alps in mind. These machines operate under extreme conditions, tunneling through a variety of ground types, including hard rock, clay, and sandstone. To ensure the stability of the tunnel and worker safety, the TBMs are also equipped with systems for automatically installing concrete segments to form the tunnel walls immediately after excavation. The cost of each machine is several billion dollars. Fengsheng. And how could we forget China? These guys are record holders for tunnel boring speed. Fangsheng is one of the most famous and largest tunnel boring machines used in China's large-scale infrastructure projects. This machine was a key element in constructing an underwater tunnel beneath the Yangtze River in Shanghai, one of the longest and deepest underwater tunnels in the world. The project was part of efforts to modernize the country's transportation infrastructure and create new routes to improve connectivity between different regions of China. Fangsheng was specially designed for this project, taking into account the unique geological conditions and the complexity of the task. The diameter of this machine's cutting head was an impressive 49 feet, making it one of the largest TBMs in the world. The total length of the machine was about 295 feet, and it weighed over 600 tons. This giant machine was equipped with advanced technologies that allowed it to effectively handle the various types of soil encountered along its path, from hard rock to soft sediments. Work on the tunnel began in the mid-2000s and Fangsheng began boring the tunnel beneath the Yangtze River, which would connect the eastern and western parts of Shanghai. The machine's primary task was to ensure the tunnel's stability at great depths underwater, which required the highest levels of precision and care. During the excavation, Fangsheng faced many challenges, including changes in soil composition and the need to tunnel through areas with a high risk of flooding. The Yangtze River Tunnel Project was completed in 2010, and Fangsheng successfully accomplished its mission. The completed tunnel became a vital part 
part of Shanghai's transport network, significantly reducing travel time between different parts of the city, and Fengsheng became a symbol of China's engineering prowess and technological achievements. Moscow Metro. How are tunnels for metro systems built? Here's another hero. Lovat is a tunnel boring machine with a cutting head diameter of 20 feet, which played a key role in the expansion of the Moscow Metro. This machine was used in the construction of new tunnels for one of the largest infrastructure initiatives in Russia's capital, the Big Circle Line, an important development of Moscow's subway system with a total length of about 43 miles. This line is intended to ease congestion on central metro sections and improve transportation access to various areas of of the city. The realization of this ambitious project required cutting-edge technology and equipment, and Lovat was one of the main machines ensuring its success. Lovat was manufactured by the Canadian company of the same name, specializing in the production of TBMs for different ground types. Lovat's primary task was to tunnel through Moscow's dense soils, such as clays, sandstones, and limestones, with a high level of precision and safety. The machine was equipped with an advanced system for automatically installing concrete segments, which formed the tunnel walls immediately after excavation, minimizing the risk of ground settlement and ensuring the structure's durability. One of Lovat's key features was its high productivity. The machine could tunnel up to 33 feet per day, significantly speeding up the construction process compared to traditional methods, which would have been much slower and required more human resources. At the same time, Lovat maintained high accuracy, which was especially important in a densely populated metropolis where any mistake could damage buildings on the surface or cause other serious consequences. Underground U.S. bases. Remember I promised to tell you about American tunnels? Why do they exist? It's quite logical. Transporting a large military contingent from the United States to Europe is expensive and labor-intensive, so it makes sense to pre-position heavy equipment in certain locations. For this purpose, the U.S. armed forces use pre-positioned stock depots, and one such location for the U.S. Marine Corps is a secret cave in Norway. In 1981, the United States and the Norwegian government signed a Memorandum of Understanding standing, allowing the U.S. to store military equipment in Norway. Since the Cold War was ongoing and the U.S. didn't want this site to become a target, it was decided to build a cave system to store the equipment. These caves were, of course, constructed using tunnel boring machines. Construction began in 1982 and was completed by 1988. This place became known as the Marine Corps Prepositioning Program in Norway. The Marine Corps immediately started moving equipment there, although the Cold War ended in 1989. Nevertheless, the facility remains in use to this day. Today, Today, the Marine Rotational Force in Europe actively uses these prepositioned stocks for rapid response and extended operations. The U.S. Marine Corps maintains a permanent presence in Norway, which allows them to strengthen their position in Europe and conduct training in cold climates. Clever, right? What do you think? Impressed by these incredible machines? Share your thoughts in the comments. And if you love fascinating stories, know how to write scripts, edit, or voice videos, join the Telegram bot via the link in the description. I'd love to collaborate. Thanks for watching.